There we go. I think it's working now. If it isn't, I'll be very upset. Let's pull up the agenda for today. Sorry for the triple ping in the Discord server if it is, let me see. <coughs> Pardon me. I can see everybody now. And it says I'm live and I think you guys can see me. But now my allergies are acting up. Hello, Storm Cloud Guard. Thank you. I'm going to grab a tissue real quick before we get started. Sniff the whole thing. All right, now we're live. That is just my crazy nose blowing. All right, so for today's topic, we're actually gonna be talking about shells, gastropods, if you will. So, so cool, here, let me grab a couple of different species. So we have a lightning whelk, Florida conch, uh, should we do an apple murex? Yeah, we'll do an apple murex. This is the apple murex, I believe. There is an apple murex. Yeah, let's see what else we have here. I guess we'll do olive and an auger too. It is olive. It's got some tiny shells all stuck up in there from a long time ago. Here is the olive shell. It does somewhat look like an olive. And here is one of my favorites called augers. Oh, and there's a periwinkle. That's one of my favorites too. Okay. Here's the auger. Here's the periwinkle. So, what do all these very different looking shells have in common? These shells all, are all created by gastropods, or mollusks, which is very interesting, as they create these very ornate and beautiful um, outer shells to protect them from the elements and predators. They're actually very efficient organisms, despite not having that much uh, locomotion, which is a fancy word for movement, they make up for it 
with their shells, and they even have a very thick, calloused foot, which sounds kind of weird, but it's what it's called for mollusks. So it's what you generally see in a live shell. It's the very hard, dense part that is in the opening. And you can tap it and stuff, but it won't move because it is covered with keratin, which is the same stuff that creates our fingernails as well as our hair. However, they use it in a much more thicker manner as it is their means of protecting their opening. However, they will move their foot and use it to dig, look for food. It's a very interesting organism. Even though it can't move too much, like I said, it makes up for it. Each one of these different shells does this in their own unique way. As smaller mollusks will create longer shells like the augers, and they rely more on burrowing. And lightning whelks and conks uh, rely more on, well, they all burrow, except they, these species rely more on um, their foot and locomotion, even though it isn't as effective. Can you eat shells? Um, some folks like to eat what is inside the shells, um, but you cannot eat the actual shell itself as it is, you know, hard. Chips, chips are tasty, not these shells. Um, let's see what else I have in here so that I can show you guys in different species. Um, I have a wheel trap in here somewhere, which is a very rare species of mollusk. They're much, they're very similar to the auger, except they're uh, pearl white and they're significantly more ornate. Very cool. Significantly smaller too. I have someone somewhere in here. I also have a horse conch that was a baby. Um, let's see what else I got in here. I have some apple murex. Um, What is this one called? I always forget it. Tulip. I can't believe I remember that right as I was picking it up. It's called tulips. These are very pretty. I found all these in Sanibel, which is uh, the most... Well, I think the most plentiful spot to find seashells as it is a breeding ground for lots of different species of mollusk. The tides kind of bring all the uh, empty but also full shells there. It's a very popular place for mollusks to reside. Warm waters, it's in the Gulf. Lots of augers, olives. Oh, I think there's a turkey wing, which is half of a uh, bivalve shell. Bivalves are what make up clams and oysters. Uh, where is it? I just saw it. There it is. It's right there, underneath that Florida cup. So here we have a turkey wing, as they do kind of look like turkey wings. This is a smaller specimen that I have, and this is half of a bivalve. So there will usually be two turkey wings joined together by a cuticle, and they form together like a clam or oyster in order to protect the mollusk inside. They too have a foot, however it is not calloused like others. So when the bivalve opens, it's soft, uh, visceral mass will scope out the environment. It's a lot different than what you might think, but 
it's effective for these species. Turkey wings are pretty fun shells. They might not be extremely rare, but they are fun to look at. Here's a geode, not very ocean related, but... Oh, here's a bigger turkey wing. See if you guys like this a little bit better. A lot of these are the same species. Well, let's see if I can find anything a little bit bigger or different. A liar, if you may. Turkey wing, tulip. I don't want to make a mess or anything. I just want to check real quick to see if there's anything. Here is a significantly better condition of an olive. This one looks very, we call it a uh, ornate, and it's very smooth and almost polished. Hello, Netta Krug. Here is an olive. Another species, however, it is significant. Well, it's the species of uh, mollusk that live inside the shell is called an olive. The olive uh, shell for the olive mollusk. As it looks, some, some of them look kind of like an olive. Very smooth on the majority of the body and it kind of comes to a top. Almost kind of like the uh, top of an olive. These two are another species of mollusk, much more thin and doesn't give as much opportunity for the uh, calloused foot to emerge or develop, but a little bit different. I have had an olive a couple of times. This is a, a different type of olive, not the edible one. Well, I guess you technically could take out the mollusk that lives in the shell and eat it. But, well, cooked, after cooked properly. Let's put this back in here. I'm actually going back to Sanibel this summer before I head off to college. Who named that mollusk? Um, let's take a look. That is a good question. Who named the olive shell? Edmund Ravenel. In the 19th century. Because apparently these are also very common on the South Carolina coast. And they're more, they're very common in the Atlantic. And so it became a state symbol. So this fella discovered them, named them. Well, there's no need to call people names, Netta Krug. Just discovered something and thought it bore a striking resemblance to another thing that already exists. It's quite common to do that. Let's see what I have here. There's the horse cog. It's all the way at the bottom. I also have a shark tooth of some species in there. I can't tell by looking at it, but if I had my manual, I could figure it out. I have a old sand dollar or shards of a sand dollar as well. Well, to each their own at a crowd. Everybody interprets things differently, as is how we look at nature. He just saw something, decided he thought it looked kind of like that. Ah, here we have something. These are called shingles. And the name is appropriate. These are extremely common species of bivalves. They are all over the place in Sandbell. 
on the Atlantic and uh, Atlantic coast, as well as the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Here they are. Uh, this is a slightly broken one, as they are extremely fragile. They are not the most effective species of bivalves, but they are very pretty. They make this very thin, translucent shell, and they only get about to be the size of maybe a quarter. Sometimes they get kind of crazy and maybe like a, a silver dollar, half dollar, dollar coin maybe, I don't know. But they don't get very large, is my point. They range from colors like a translucent orange, yellow, occasionally red. I have seen one or two red or orangish reds. Um, but much like other bivalves, they are connected by a cuticle and they fold inwards to like a like other oysters do. Um, but their shell is significantly softer and much more fragile, hence the name shingles. They do kind of fall apart very easily, but they're very, very pretty. I hate to say this, but I could easily just pinch my fingers down and probably break this. But I'm not going to do that, as this is one of the few ones that I actually was able to keep, for the most part, intact. <laughs> so let's gently put that with the obsidian. Okay, let's see what else we have here. If you couldn't tell, tonight's theme is all about shells and different mollusk species. <laughs> All right, there's some more augers. Is that my whittle trap? No, that's a uh, thin auger though. Hmm, it was a very long auger. Pointy. This is a different species. It's a different species of murex. Let me Google it real quick. Murex shells. Apple murex. Hmm. This is it. Hmm. That is it. That's it. It's a lace murex. I misspoke. This is a lace murex. Still a murex species of gastropod or mollusks, um, aka like the rock mollusks. However, where's my? Here's my apple mol. My uh, apple murex. Apple murexes are easier to tell as they are generally. They have red and brown pattern patterns around them, as well as the uh, ridges upon their uh, shell um, are not as pronounced and lace-like as the lace murex, as you can kind of see around here. The ridges and spines are significantly more pronounced than our friend here, apple murex. Murexes are a lot more common in the Indo-Pacific region, but um, some do end up in areas like the Gulf of Mexico, which isn't too bad, as mollusks are a very plentiful source of food for lots of other organisms, as well as they have little to no negative effect on that environment.
which is very good. We appreciate some biodiversity. I don't like, oops, I don't like digging through them too much if I can help it. I don't want to accidentally break something like a shingle. a tiny lightning well. I think that's what that is. If I can dig it out. Come on, buddy. There we go. There it is. This is a very pretty one. It was in pretty good condition, if I do say so myself. Whelks are developed actually in egg casings. Egg casings are a very interesting find as they look almost like something out of a sci-fi movie. Let me pull up a picture for you real quick. If any of you have played Subnautica, they look very similar to... Um, I guess they don't look extremely like a... Uh, they look like an accordion more than anything. I was thinking of a different type of uh, egg casing. Lightning whelk egg casing. They look kind of like an accordion or like a skeleton of a snake. You know, let me save the picture so I can zoom in on it. Here we go. So here we go. Phone's charging. Let me take it off the charger. So that is the egg casing that uh, the mollusk produces in order to uh, develop offspring, which will eventually create a um, shell of their own. However, they start off simple larvae move up to a more visceral form, then they start developing, developing a beautiful shell of their own, as well as that calloused foot, which they used for their locomotion. The Tahiri dynasty? Um, no, not a Craig, I'm sorry. This is a uh, fish channel. And that's what happened to the daily fish videos. Um, I do them as often as I can. However, I am trying to finish off this semester strong. Um, so I'm doing less videos than usual in order to make time for my studies as well as get ready for college. It's just around the corner. Hey, Jimmy, it's good to see you. Welcome to the stream. You mean Samuel? Samuel is not a real octopus. We got him at Hobby Lobby. He is just a, I believe he's ceramic. He's, no, he's, I can't really tell what he is. Might be wooden or ceramic. Might be wooden. Probably wouldn't. Yes, there were quite a few technical difficulties. First stream I opened, couldn't see the live chat at all. Like the entire bar was completely empty. Live chat wasn't there. I couldn't type anything. It was just completely gone. But people could say they could type and they could see me. And I really tried reloading it again. And um, <laughs> people were typing, but they couldn't see me and they couldn't hear me. It was just constantly loading, go, going live, going live. But it wouldn't go live. Um, and then now, take three, finally successful. Red and blue fish over here. I mean, big blue fish, my co-host. What about him? He is our trusty co-host 
always here, always ready to give fish facts. Let's see if I can find one more different shell species or mollusk species, I should say, as the shells are only developed because of the mollusks. And then I will clean up and take one or two questions and then, or you guys, how about you guys start asking questions now? So then after I'm all done, I could just answer them then. So I don't actually skip things. How does a fake fish co-host a show? Um, he provides moral support as well as he's always watching over the chat and all our fishy friends to make sure everybody's having a great day and learning something new. How was my day? My day has been very well. School was pretty straightforward. Nothing too eventful happened. Will I get Animal Crossing? If I can afford it someday, then absolutely. As well as affording Nintendo Online account, as I do not have that either. <laughs> I have Super Smash Bros. and Breath of the Wild, but other than that, I am broke. How do they build the same structure every time? Well, it's kind of like how humans are able to form the same like body parts. Like we're able to make arms and legs and hair, nose, all the stuff that we need to survive. They kind of do it the same way. Um, like primates, for example, like there are tons of different species of primates. They all form the same different types of the same necessary appendages, but how they go about it is different. Like there's chimpanzees, but then there's marmosets. They're kind of the same thing. Their genetic code has them over the years, they've developed their own specific type of shells in order to protect themselves and fit their uh, body standards. Um, Cause their body knows how much it can grow and each type of mollusk grows to form its own calloused shell. So it's very interesting. Well, they make the shells, like they secrete the uh, material, kind of like how we um, grow fingernails. It is very similar to that, except at a much more intense scale. They don't just create it out of thin air or at the world around them. Their body produces and secretes the stuff in order to create the shell itself, which has been greatly affected by the rising acidity in ocean waters as in the early larvae stages of lots of bivalves like oysters, for example, they are not able to produce their shell and they will die because of the higher acidity in the water as um, in the early stages, the secreted um, shell material is so weak, it can't fully develop into a stronger or developed shell while the acid is in the water so high. Puck wants me to join the Discord. Um, let's see here. Um, well, I was actually planning on wrapping up the stream soon. Well, let's let you guys decide, actually. For those who are watching, shall we finish off the stream with the Ocean Mic server staff in the voice channel? And I'll put us on speaker and we will conduct a discussion of sorts about any fish related topics that we might think of. 
or would you rather me do that for a later stream where we have more time? It's up to you guys. Puck is very excited about it. Um, but as for what I do, that is up to you guys. Oh, I'm getting pings. So, Stormcloak is fine with whatever. Jimmy would prefer a dedicated stream for it. Yeah, I can do that. I am free um, anytime, really. Um, tomorrow I have Dungeons and Dragons with Lagavulin and some of the other guys. Well, some other guys, not the Ocean Mike server, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You will be doing that Sunday, maybe, maybe Saturday, later Saturday. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Are the rocks in the ocean alive. Um, if we're talking about rock mollusks like the uh, laced murex, then yes, they are. The normal rocks like sedimentary, uh, metamorphic, those type of rocks, not quite. However, some might argue that they kind of are, as they are sometimes covered in algae and kelp or barnacles as well, which are also another species of uh, mollusk. Giants are real though, huh? Okay. Um... Why aren't they alive? Because they are rocks. They do not have any organs, a nervous system, no basic nervous cords, or anything similar. No, I'm not going to look. I'm turning off my phone now. Um, but yes. Why didn't they evolve to have that? Because rocks don't evolve. They are a, I, Netacrog, no offense, buddy, but if you're just gonna come into the stream to troll, then come on, dude. I'll be happy to answer any genuine fish-related questions, but Sorry, I'm not a grug. You leave me with no choice. Troll, you been blocked. This user's messages will be hidden. Sorry, Netacrug, but I know what you're up to and other things. Peep this one. Like, really, peep this one. No more Fortnite. No more cards. No more $19 cards. No more trolls. You've been blocked. Um, let's see, what, is there such a thing as Ocean Michael? Well, my name is Michael, or Mike. It is A-E-L, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. I've been called many names. Hydration Michael, uh, Ocean Mike, Oceanic Michael. Man of the ocean, ocean of the man. <laughs> All right. 
Does anybody have any genuine questions before I wrap up the stream? Um, I will take a couple. Anything related to mollusks and shell development, that type of stuff, or any other fish-related questions I'm happy to talk about. Monday? Um, I can do Monday, actually. I have that day off of school, surprisingly. I have actually never had an energy drink. I've had Gatorade, but I don't really think that counts. It's more of an electrolyte drink than anything. Drink some water, maybe have a, like, a piece of bread or something. I don't know. I don't know much about how to counteract caffeine. I don't drink caffeine. I have soda. Don't drink coffee. Don't drink energy drinks. Pretty boring, but you know, I'm on my grind. That's what I've heard. I've heard bread is good for that type of stuff. I don't know if it's the same with energy drinks though. I don't touch any of it. Anyway, is it, before I wrap up, anybody take a, I know you work at Starbucks. Starbucks has great hot chocolate and great pastries though. I'm just not a coffee guy. I'm sorry. All right, does anybody have any questions before we wrap up tonight's stream? I know I keep asking that, but I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anybody's queries. I would love some hot chocolate. Chocolate is good. I'll just have to take my lactate before I try to drink it. <laughs> How was my day? My day was very good, thanks. Hope yours was too. Um, I didn't do anything extremely exciting. I got burgers for my brother and I. Hello, Mira Salito. We're just wrapping up the stream, but I'm taking a couple questions before we wrap things up. I talked about mollusks and the different types of shells that they create and why. Um, but yeah, we can make it a little bit longer of a stream. I wanna make sure everybody gets their questions answered or... I do. He was in the server at one point, but then I banned him. He took my gamer tag from a long time ago. Yep, he's Broshan Mike. Well, Broshan David. I was just trolling. He was doing snooping. He was just there to spy on me. He does his own thing. He's always up in his room, but I'm but from what I've seen, I'm pretty sure he's pretty good with computers. So, he programmer David, I don't know. Thank you. He's almost taller than me now, surprisingly. For reasons. Any other questions? My request. Fix your PC. Um, maybe. 
don't know. Won't work on the top. Well, that's no good. I don't know if he's capable of doing that. He doesn't talk to me much about his computer stuff. Kind of keeps to himself for the most part, which is all good. But yeah. That is not a question, but will do. All right, it is 1030. I did not realize how late it was. Okay. Um, all right, I guess it's going to wrap up tonight's stream. So I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's stream about mollusks and shells. I've had this on my table for quite some time. I thought it was about time that I actually started talking about the different species and what they're all about and how they develop. Pardon me, I have the hiccups. So, yeah. Hope everybody enjoyed tonight's stream. So, let's put these shells back. And as I do so, I will bid everybody a fantastic night. Hope everybody is having a great day or whatever time of the time it is for you guys. So, let's do it on this side so you guys can see the different shells. So, Good night, everybody, or good morning, or good day. Um, you guys are great. Like always, feel free to leave suggestions anytime. Ask questions. That's what we're all about here, getting questions answered and learning something new. So stay safe, everybody. Be sure to wash your hands lots and lots. Um, everybody have a great rest of your night or morning. I already said that. And like always, goodbye, fishy friends.